Chair, um, FEMA has been busy. Uh, it was quite a year, uh, pandemic, uh, above average tornado, flood, hurricane, and wildfires uh, in the United States. And I've got to thank uh, the people at FEMA. Uh, there were a lot of parts of the last administration that became pretty dysfunctional. Uh, FEMA did not. Uh, and they were able to deliver. Uh, and I appreciate all the people who engaged in, in that hard work. Um, you know, the uh, building uh, resilient infrastructure uh, and communities, uh, the BRIC program, as you call it, is uh, totally oversubscribed. The demand is phenomenal. The savings are even more extraordinary and phenomenal, in addition to ongoing savings for the uh, the individuals, communities, businesses, uh, in terms of reduced insurance costs uh, when they undertake these, uh, these uh, activities. In October, I led a bipartisan letter with Ranking Member Graves, Chair Titus, and then uh, Ranking Member Katko, FEMA Administrator Gaynor, and uh, OMB Director Vought, uh, urging them to set aside the full $3.7 billion uh, of BRIC uh, for COVID. Uh, unfortunately, they ignored that and they set aside only $500 million. I'm hopeful that that can soon be corrected uh, by this uh, administration. Uh, and also, uh, when we did the DRRA, uh, the Disaster Recovery Resilience Act, uh, I think that was the last Congress or the Congress before, I can't remember anymore. Um, you know, we. Uh, uh, established uh, post-disaster uh, hazard mitigation uh, grant programs uh, for uh, FEMA for fire uh, management assistance. Uh, and I, I think there are activities that uh, need to be uh, expanded and considered under, under that program. Uh, for example, uh, you know, you probably can't move an entire community out of the wildland urban interface when it comes to fires. Uh, but uh, in the case of Blue River, my district, the fire was started by uh, a uh, wire that fell from a pole with a severe and absolutely unprecedented, unusual wind out of the Northeast, which doesn't happen. But hey, a lot of weird things happen these days. And, uh, you know, so uh, considering to put uh, the utilities underground, it's, yeah, it's an additional cost, but it's a one time cost. Uh, you're not going to have to put back the poles again, or maybe put back the poles and start another fire again, and then go back and put the poles back up, et cetera. So uh, I, I think that we need to expand uh, our view of what kinds of activities, uh, you know, will be, uh, you know, will be acceptable. And, and I don't believe all this investment has to be borne directly by the federal government. Uh, going all the way back to 113th Congress, I worked with. Uh, Representatives Reed, uh, Pascrell, and Diaz Ballard to introduce the Disaster Savings and Resilient Construction Act, uh, which we will reintroduce. Uh, it provides tax incentives to encourage individuals, companies uh, to uh, basically prepare their homes and businesses uh, to uh, their whatever is the predicted natural disaster uh, and known risks in their areas, uh, lessens the cost of insurance uh, claims, and certainly a future disaster relief. Uh, and I plan on working with our colleagues on the Ways, Committee, Ways and Means Committee, and hopefully they will advance the measure. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just three years ago, uh, the uh, Republican-controlled Congress and White House decided that DOD had to establish a resilience standard for all its at-risk uh, uh, facilities. Uh, and they all had to be, uh, everything critical had to be a minimum of two feet above base uh, flood level elevation. Uh, so uh, if it's good enough when the federal government invests money uh, in the Pentagon and its bases, I think uh, it should be for all federally funded infrastructure. And we'll be looking in our surface bill to build back uh, resilient. Uh, and then uh, during our February markup, uh, my friend from Louisiana, uh, Representative Garrett Graves offered an amendment to set aside 500 million of the 50 billion we gave to FEMA disaster relief to be used to establish a national flood standard. I'm certainly open to working with him in pursuing one. Our colleagues, uh, Mr. Price of North Carolina and Mr. Zeldin of New York have recently 
introduced legislation with a similar goal, which has been referred to the committee. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us uh, to uh, you know, go forward in uh, a bipartisan way uh, to work and help uh, give FEMA the tools and uh, the capability and the flexibility it needs to meet with uh, uh, new and evolving uh, risks. Um, and you know, BRIC is just one example of uh, how quickly uh, we could make these investments uh, with the oversubscription of that program. Uh, with that, Madam Chair, I yield back to balance my time.